Well, hello everybody, guys and gals. This is Brett Douglas with Ironclad Landscape Management. And I kind of wanted to go over a property. Uh, this is the during phase. We've been doing a pretty good size rehab on a huge corner lot in uh, Deltona, Florida. And basically what we've been accomplishing is uh, we had a large natural area. We've limbed up, we went in, lifted up the live oaks, lifted up the magnolia tree, and then the crepe myrtles and what we're doing is they really like a natural we have some beautiful lower petalum ruby chenis underneath and we just had a really tight canopy that had grown down so what we're going to do is you can see some of the first phases of us we got all the weeds down we're going to spray a, a herbicide we're going to also utilize a pendimethalin a pre-m which is a uh, post weed emergent or the um, gosh i'm so tired the pre-m is a, is a pre uh, post uh, pre-emergent for the weeds. So basically what it's going to happen guys We're going to spray for the weeds that are that are exposed right now We uh, took them down with a line trimmer. We left a little bit on the on the the uh, top growth We're going to spray those with a roundup systemic. It's going to take it in there It's non-selective kill it all and then what we're going to do before we install the mulch We clean all the leaves out. We will then install that pre and that pendimethalene, which is a, a pre Emergent and so what it's going to do is sit in there and try to block some of the new seed seed weed seeds from germinating Sorry, it's been brutally hot out here again today But uh, you can see we take great pride in uh, taking out old stuff that's in the way Archive type things weed barriers things like that that are being pulled up and are a nuisance And we reinstall the new as needed got the Lagerstrom indica looking beautiful got a camp for over there We pruned up and then I wanted to show you on the outside of the property guys um, These people had been here since the 80s they built a beautiful, they used the concrete barrier, they have a nice irrigation, all this is heavily irrigated. Just kind of got out of hand. Um, we had some beautiful, beautiful Confederate jasmine that was growing. If you remember in our earlier video, everything you see, every plant, every tree, every bush has been shaped and manicured. That Confederate jasmine, you couldn't even see the palm that was in the corner. But it basically we've stripped it all down, we've pruned the fruit trees back, we've uh, created the nice barrier in here I wanted to show y'all. We have to still pull through here and clean this up, but I'm tired this evening, so we're gonna do this tomorrow morning first thing. But you can see we get a little bit of the scraps of stuff we're gonna clean up, and we're gonna install that uh, pre-em in here after we spray around up the first day. We're gonna install that granular pre-em, and then we're gonna install the pine mulch. And we shouldn't probably have to uh, walk in here, so you can see the camphor tree limbed up, fruit trees trimmed. We've got a beautiful uh, peach tree over there. We've got some pygmy date palms. Another camp for hiding over there, but you can basically see that this is large bed area that once we get this taken care of, this was just entirely filled with weeds. And now we have a beautiful thing right here. We're going to, uh, we're going to blow this pathway off, clean this up, and then we're going to fill this with river rock. And then we're going to have pine bark, large pine bark nuggets in here. You can see we started prepping the beds out. We're kind of doing it and uh, we've pulled out actually uh, 40 cubic yards of debris out of here. By the time we're done, we'll pull another 20 out tomorrow. If you remember over here we had the Boston fern and then we had a beautiful beautiful Barbara Korst Bougainvillea that's been manicured down to a manageable height everything you see has been pruned and we kind of base it off a four foot fence three foot maybe <laughs> it's been a long day but see how everything's limbed up and you have great visibility and you can see through and then you have your depth different heights that's what you want in a landscape you don't want everything three you know one dimensional you want to have a 3d look you want to have larger stuff medium size small ground covers so everything is uh pruned up in here and i kind of wanted to just take a quick walk with you if you don't mind show you remember our uh our uh whew, so our, our japonica over here i'm so tired our japonica the evergreen that we trimmed up you know chefaleras we went ahead and cut those balled them up best we could you know these have some large plant material and i wanted to show you when you're pruning guys what we call selective pruning and you're you're taking back heading back the branches what's going to happen is when you have to take larger structured pieces out let this grow back up a little bit and then you can just prune the light stuff so you're not really into that wood all the time but anyway those are going to be really nice it's got this great peach that we've limbed up we're actually removing all of the uh, concrete barriers out we have to pull the weed barriers remember this had all that kind of outdated uh pressure treated stuff if you remember we've pulled all the pressure treated out the first day we pulled 20 yards of that out we just are going for a nice clean look and we're going to actually bring the sod cutter in here tomorrow and we're going to get all this prepped i'm going to cut all these weeds out of here 
all this weed pressure and then what we're going to do is uh, get geared up and we're going to install Bahia. We're going to probably go in with a nice Pensacola Bahia that's uh, we just want to have something that's uh, drought resistant. We're not having to water all the time and then basically this homeowner doesn't have to pay $400 a month for St. Augustine. Once again, beautiful canopy. All of a sudden she was commenting she can see her frog. She can see her tree house down here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, and then I wanted to uh, make a comment. If you see the white posts that are up here, this gentleman did a beautiful irrigation system. He had had some future plans. So, you know, unfortunately he had passed away and uh, we had the white pipe. So if we ever wanted to put drip lines in here and uh, get high tech, we can. Uh, you see the gardenia radicans we've trimmed down. The little Lagerstrom indica. Got that trimmed up. Still have to pick up all this tomorrow. My guys will pick this up. We'll prep this last bed. Go back in with the pine bark. So you can kind of see, if you look behind us, everything's nice and shaped up. Obviously, this is a during phase, guys. Don't get all excited. It's not like we leave this debris here. But um, I shaved all this really nice. Once again, a camphor limbed up perfectly. We have a fruit tree. If you remember, we had a large number of bushes against the house. We ripped all those out. And what we want to show you is when we go back, let me show you some of the things that we have to accomplish as a, as a, as a professional landscape contractor. So what we want to do is remove the stumps out and then we want to take the weed barrier out of here that's been in here pinned up. We're going to remove all that out and then all of these irrigation heads, these are uh, Rainbird, probably 1600 heads. We're going to go ahead and remove those down to grade level and they're probably on hard pipe and we're going to put a polyflex pipe on those so they have a little bit of movement so that if they get run over that's okay for the homeowner. I don't know if you remember back over here, once again we had... The jasmine was just all the way to the shed over here. This is completely cleaned up. We have to, well, completely pruned up. We have to finish cleaning it up and grading it all out tomorrow. And then if you remember, this was a ligustrum and this ligustrum was probably six to eight foot tall. And now it's at a manageable height. We got a wisteria in the back, back over there. Uh, we didn't prune the neighbors because we didn't ask their permission. So tomorrow when I'm there, Another comment, guys, when you're out here doing this landscaping, whether the plant material is on your property or not, don't go walking into neighbor's yard just to make it look good. If you can see that's kind of an eyesore that it's on the neighbors. However, we don't want to get caught for trespassing, so be very careful. You can see we pull all our stuff into the middle aisle here. This will all be cleaned up tomorrow by my guys, and I'll be able to use a sod cutter. Uh, the demise of a fiberglass shovel. <laughs> you know, once they get brittle in the sun, guys, um, you know, they tend to... Uh, they shatter, see where that is, throw those away. Don't keep them on your truck, it's a violation. Anyway, you can see uh, over here, we pulled all that plant material out. Remember there was evergreen giants in here and some Aztec grass? We've pulled those out, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use this organic material that's been under there just uh, fermenting away. We're gonna pull all that into the center. We're gonna grade all this out really nice. Get ready to install Bahia. We're gonna put a service line in probably for Miss Lisa so that she can uh, keep a little bit of uh, rock or mulch up against the uh, basin. I haven't really talked to her about which she prefers, but we'll, we'll get to that stage when we're there. So tomorrow we'll rip the rest of this black weed barrier out. We're gonna dig this stump out, regrade that. And then the challenge is of course up here where the shed was, we're gonna wanna grade all this in where you can see that we had a difference in height. We're gonna grade that in and fix that. Remove out the last pieces of rock, the, uh, the border, the brick border, and then basically all of this area in here. We did the final measurement, guys. It looks like it's about 3,350 square feet for Bahia. So we're, uh, we do the math right. We're looking at uh, seven 500 square foot pallets being out here delivered. Always want to have a little, little extra for shrinkage. So instead of going at 3,000, we want to make sure we're at 35 because even if we do our tree rings, we're going to have some cuts and everything else. Oh, and I want to mention over here, we're doing this to be nice to the client. We're going to go ahead and re refabric all this in here and uh, I'm building her off site. I'm building a nice little potting table for her. I just wanted to have something for her to remember us by. So I'm building a nice potting plant for a uh, table over here for, and then uh, she'll be able to use her organic uh, planters that are there. And then we'll put a little privacy fence across here and then this will be heavily mulched. Be a nice little setup for this. We're going to take down and actually utilize this being sod right here. So you can tell that, uh, you know, we just want to get away from these formal lines. See how everything was just a straight 90 degree turn. We're going to have nice flowing Bahia in here. She's going to be able to mow really nice. And uh, we really look forward to getting this project done. And so I uh, want to tell you all uh, we'll be done for the night tonight. My guys will be here in the morning picking all of this up. And then uh, we'll get the sod cut out. And then we'll show you maybe some of the installation. But for sure, 
we'll get the final view out here and um this is what we call a mid-level project um this is definitely one that's taking you know probably about three to four days just because of the amount of stuff that we've done out here but we're also doing other jobs at the same time so god bless y'all thanks for watching ironclad landscape management there's my uh thundering truck over there hey guys always remember too to be decent to your this lady has some beautiful dogs don't be that guy that leaves the gates unlocked every time you walk in and out don't 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 cause a liability to your client remember guys our job is to serve our customers make them very much be happy with our services and in the future be a repeat customer once again you can see this last pathway out to the dually or the dually listen to me the crew cab and uh we're gonna be uh, jumping in that bad boy that's ac'd up and we're heading home and we'll see y'all tomorrow one more look of uh one more look of what this bed line will look like once it's all done it'll be nice and clean with all that pine bark god bless y'all we'll catch you tomorrow